London where you have to walk in from one side or the other and then the doorways through the middle, you know, you know sort of blast, blast proofing. It's some kind of a horse guard parade, you know. You've got like the uh, Navy building and then uh, Foreign and Commonwealth Office, the Churchill bunker. Yeah. And on that thing there's a big bunker, it's a bit like sort of that. It's doorways in from various sides through little sort of alleyways. check out on the internet later on and find out whether we're correct. We can tell a fake aircraft from a real aircraft. <laughs> this is one of those BBC sort of made out of polystyrene. You could lift it with your hand. <laughs> you know, it's meant to look like a real rock. It's got dihedral wings that go up, which would make it more stable in flight because it would naturally want to sort of float back to a central position. This is where, let's do the uh, is it real test. Oh, well, it feels quite solid. It does actually feel solid. This is made out of wood or something. It's fiberglass. Do you reckon that's fiberglass? 100%. It's fiberglass. 100%. Yeah. Looks good though. I hope the bunker is not made out of fiberglass as well. <laughs> it's a fake bunker. <laughs> it's alright though because we paid him in fake money. <laughs> so uh, when they try to cash it in later on, they'll be uh, sorely mistaken.
night sirens. down ahead of us. Yeah, just make sure you don't trip over that little lip. I'm glad you told me that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
Wow. I'm going to turn it off now because uh, if you want to hear the talk, you're going to have to come and pay, I'm afraid. to the first floor.
You said Marconi, is it? Marconi. Wireless. Crashed aircraft 1944. It's a piece of it. Mosquito. It's one of the wing commanders. Was in charge here. Led the Dam Busters raid in 1943. Ground crew. That's what they used to wear. What do you reckon, mate? It's the corner there. There's a lot you can't see there. Yeah. Inspectors of the Women's Royal Air Force. 1918. 1919, going up to 1966. Chester, England. 
It's a real piece of history, that. Thickle wires there coming in. This is the Royal Observer Corps booth. Here we are. Forewarned is forearmed. This is room 7A, Observer Corps liaison and map tracer. So there we are. We've got their map here. More of more of France than actually of England. Some interesting lamp design. up to 6,000 feet those balloons. Amazing height. It's the weight of the cable to carry a balloon to 6,000 feet. There's some of the drawing and cartography tools here. And this is the Royal Observer Corps view in from this side. You can actually see down onto the to the lower gantry level. I think this is the station station controllers were back here. It's a station, um, coastal, fighter, bomber, that sort of stuff was around there. And then the wing commander was in the main the main room as we saw up there. Through sort of the plexiglass. It's really, really clear. It'll be naughty now, I'm gonna just gonna See if I can tap it. You can see it's a, it's not like um, it's not glass. I don't think it's glass anyway. So let's have a little look around. Deputy Commandants, 1936-1938, this is when this place was built, I think in 1938, and going up to Royal Observer Corps Officer, 1996, and Commandants, Commandants, 1984-1996, this is more, more recent, oh here we go. This is going back, so Commandants, 1936, EAD Masterman, going up to 1983, RJ Offord, and 1984, continuing on GP Black to 1996, MK Widdowson. Quick look through here. So we've got another emergency stairs down, which is not the same when we came up, so this is a secondary. So got um, back rooms here. Back rooms and, and a dead body look. So yeah. That's where they store all the bodies. Let's take a little walk back to the main room, have a look at the lights. Yeah. 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 Here it's hired last year. Yeah, it's the Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. He, he still lives just over the road, he's not, not very far away. But he's been over for years and get up. There's another lamps and, lamps and tube over there, look. 
so I assume I assume this is the way through to that other room. Oops, no, secret, secret. There's a bit of a thing there, but it doesn't feel like it's open, but... Yeah, there's a secret room in there. Let's see whether we can get, we can see in there. I'll just open this up. Well, I can see in there, it's okay. I've just got to shadow the, uh, the lens slightly to be able to see. downstairs. So go back into the main control room we'll explain a little bit more about um, this, these lights if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to go back in the room and I'm going to explain the, explain the light system. So you can see there's the, the steps that would have taken people up to the to this area, the telephones and the telephones would have relayed through. But what we've got here is these lights here, red, I believe each different colour, and there are four colours, each station had three aircraft per colour. So that would mean in use, it would mean three on red, three on yellow, three on green, and three on cyan, whatever the different colours are. My colour vision's not that good. But red, uh, red is it? Yellow, cyan, green. So tell me if my colour vision's correct. Have a quick look. So between those you had three, six, nine, twelve aircraft, if all four lights were lit. And their position on the board changes and this thing slides up and down depending on which state of readiness they're in, whether they're on the ground, whether they're in the air, or whether they're enemy sighted down here, ordered to land, landed and refueling. And when, I believe when they're airborne, the colors which are here, you can see here, uh, blue, yellow, red, it's every, I think it was five minutes. So the first light would mean five minutes, blue would mean 10 minutes. Um, then yellow means 15 minutes and red means 20 minutes, something like that. But it was to do with uh, these colors on the map here, on this here. So you've got five minutes red, green, blue, red, green, blue, so it's 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15. So they worked it in 15 minute segments and the lights that are over there on the board. So it was to allow you to look up and be able to work out times without having to, uh, without having to look back at the clock. They have this light here that changes every five minutes. So that would become red, green, blue. So it would change on the time. And I think the times that things are put on the board depending on when they were put on the board, would have a red, green or blue marker on it so they could tell which times they've been up for. So, some sort of system like that anyway. And on the right hand side is the visual weather system where if it was red, it meant that it was bad visibility, bad weather. And if it was green, it meant it was good visibility, good weather. And this was obviously cloud heights and uh, in tenths. They measure it in eighths today, they call it octaves. So four out of 10 meant that the clouds were four tenths. If it was 10 tenths, it would be 100% cloud. So working in tenths seems a bit more sensible rather than the octaves, eighths that we use today. These designated the height in thousands of feet that the blimps were put up the, uh, to try and keep enemy aircraft out. So they were designated in a particular area like Dover. Dover would be flying its blimps at 4,000 feet, whereas Tilbury docks near Gloucester would have its blimps at 6,000 feet. And the blimps were often apparently put more at the ports to stop the 
destruction of the ports because the ports are important. So Gravesend port, 4,000 feet blimps. London docks, 3,000 feet blimps. And uh, this would tell you the state of the squadrons, how many aircraft. P were pilots, A were aircraft. So pilots in 19 available, 12 aircraft. And this corresponds to the, the four colours we saw. So you've got two sets of two sets of two sets of two sets of so sort of like red, uh, yellow, cyan, and green. So you've got four sets of aircraft, and you know, so they may have 12 aircraft available, 19 pilots. So you had to cycle the amount of pilots. The aircraft could obviously be up longer than the sets of pilots, but and yeah. But I mean, you've got Tangmere, Tangmere, Northweald, Hornchurch, Kenley, Biggin Hill. This one, Debden, Northolt. So you can see that in Northolt. They would have had more than more than the twelve, so they'd have two fighter units there. So twelve in that, twelve in that. So yeah, interesting. And the weather taken at Biggin Hill, North Holt, Northweald, Hendon, Croydon, Stapledford, Martlesham, Gravesend, and Hawkinge. Yeah. So very interesting. You getting ready for the next lot of people? Yeah, I'm going to go and let Fred down. Okay. If you want to go upstairs in the museum bit... You were okay up there? Yeah, you, you're all right up there. Is there anything else to see in this section down, downstairs? No, nothing else down here, yeah. Okay, thanks. These are, look, there's, um, these look like lamps and tube holes there. Oh, they are, they must be, yeah. Yeah. Lamps and tubes, and a... Uh, and a letterbox as well, which is interesting. A letterbox hole. Are these lamps and tube holes there to take to take messages directly upstairs? Yeah, we, unfortunately. Bits have dropped off the bottom. Uh, yeah. We uh, we've been trying to acquire some, but when, whenever we hear of it. Yeah, we've got lots of that stuff, and they they do they're pulling parts of it out to clean up areas, so you never know they might let you have some. Well, yeah, that'd be great if we could get it up and run it again. Is that the stairway? That, uh, that just go, that's just that just goes up to Museum to where we've well. just come from. Okay. And that goes through to the emergency exit out the back. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right to go out now. Yeah, yeah that's done. Uh, so, um, what was part is going on? Transformers. Wow. Yeah. This is what we like. All the dots in the buildings. Yeah. Pump equipment. It's actually working. Yeah. yeah this is the one that's going at the moment. Right. So it's a lot of operating motors. Wow. Look at that. Belt driven. Look at that. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, very much. And the Transformers. Yeah, there's one in the centre, One on one the other end of the building. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Now, there's emergency exits that come out up on the surface. Is that what the big square concrete buildings are on the surface? There are other escape routes to get up. We've just got one out the back. 
Right. Is that the one building that's in front of the main... No, that's a generator room. That's the main generator That's a generator room. Yeah. 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 So, so the only two, there's only two ways in. This way... Uh, the yeah. 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 What's the other building that's uh, further towards the road then? That's a, a big old key. concrete thing. Yeah, he was telling us that's American Nuclear Bomb Club. Oh, it's oh, just down here by the car. One, one, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was a... Uh, took them three years to build that. Ah, right. So that is not open to the public then? No. It's not still in use though? No, we, uh, we use it as storage. Ah, right, okay. Is it, is it big? Huh? Is it a big bunker? Well, that, no, it's as you see it. So it's on the surface? It's on the surface. Ah, yeah. right, okay. Wow. Oh. Well, no, that's it. Pull it. Oh yeah, you've got it. This is the one you're on about with the air. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to pull this one a little bit strongly because of the air current, apparently. Yeah. So uh, we've just done the nuclear bunker. Oh, sorry. So we've just done the World War II bunker, and apparently this building up here is the generator house and the building which I was curious about which I was wondering if it was part of the underground is that one there and that's a nuclear bunker but it's on the surface and that was built by the Americans and he was just saying it took about three years to build this one not in not in use for tourists uh, not all that big as you can see physically that is it that's the full dimensions apparently and it doesn't go underground and they uh, apparently use it just for storage and so we're going to have a walk yeah. around the chap said that um that the lock when they first took it over the council told them that they couldn't find the keys yeah so they got a locksmith in and it took the locksmith six days to be able to get into the bunker oh that's the one he was talking about yeah. it's this one here right and it was full of hadon hadon gas because the americans set off the fire extinguisher system when they left oh yeah so they had to open the doors and let it all come out and they also concreted up the toilets and any entrances or waterways into the bunker so that they uh so that no rodents could get in which is quite interesting mm. Have a quick look then. Oh. So how good to study cam when you fall over on your ass on ice? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, you don't actually realise the person has fallen over well, and, and cracked their head open and is bleeding out. You know, you won't notice that with a steady cam because it all looks wonderful. Yeah. Mr. Bunker. Mr. Bunker. No, there's no key. No key. Where's the key? How the hell do they get this thing open then? It's locked on the inside, isn't it? This can't be the main entrance then if it's locked from the inside. So I reckon we'll have to go and have a look around the other side because there's got to be another way in. Unless, if, you're, if you take this plastic, <laughs> oops, if you take this plastic plaque off, it's probably, a <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. So you've got the main building is over there, and then you've got this building here. wonder where you get in then. I reckon it's got to be down the other side. I think he said there was entrances at both ends. Right. It's got to be the other end then, isn't it, the main entrance. Uh, see, you know, these bloody Battle of Britain buildings, they can't afford a decent roof. Look, it's bloody caved in already. It's only been, it's only been here two years. 
or is this what they call like modern modern design? Somebody pro probably got paid a lot of money for that. Looks a bit camo. It's been painted in a couple of different colours. Right, here we go. This looks a bit more like it. Somebody's bike stored here. Ah, definitely looks more like it because on this end we've got locks and padlocks. This is the bane of my life. I don't like when I see that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all still movable. And there's where the, uh, the locks we had to go getting in when yeah. you can find the keys. Yeah, that just spins out so. Oh, yes. Mechanism. Mm. Oh, that's a big one. Bloody hell. Funny, isn't it? Yeah, they for anything that couldn't turn a corner, they probably had to have that... Um, it's probably... Sli is it slideable, or did we just put it... So that is to allow things that are quite big to get in there. That's why they've got that big door, which uh, proper nuclear bunker, complete with rubber bits there to seal seal the air. You have a look at uh, size of hinges versus my hand. Yeah. Have a look at why they've done this on the back and if it's movable. Oh, I see. Look. Oh yeah. There's. It's all. It's all kind of in place. But it, it it looks like probably if they had to load something that was very large, they couldn't get round the right angle. They could take these these bolts out, lift these out of the way, and then slide something straight into the bunker lengthways there. It's probably a large hallway, I imagine. That's a long corridor that faces into the bunker there. So we've got air grills, air grills, and possibly even a little uh, sentry point there that you could have had a gun in place, gun, gunnery sort of guy watching out, make sure nobody comes near. Hmm, interesting. I wonder where there's any footage online of anybody that's been in that one. Even though they use it for storage, it might be nice for historical uh, reasons to see to see what's in there. You did say it's completely original inside. It's completely original. You said it's original. So it's when the Americans left it, they set off the fire, uh, fire extinguishers, locked the doors, and walked away. And that's it. And when they when they come and opened it, it was the first time someone had been in there. But they couldn't find the key, so they had to get a locksmith to drill the holes through the door to get in. It took him six days to get into it, apparently. Yeah. Interesting uh, little bunker to maybe mm. see whether they'd let people inside just for a one-off tour. Because if it's intact and it's, you know, they, they, as it was. He did say that he was gonna, they were going to turn it into a, a, you know, a public museum, but not for some time. So you could be talking tens of ten years or more. Seems a bit of a shame. Yeah. Good stuff. There's got to be an emergency exit somewhere from that. Do you think? From from their building. From here. From there. Well, it's a surface one, isn't it? So possibly it could have a little underground uh, secret secret tunnel. They often do, don't they? Maybe that's just why it's got blast doors on opposite ends, you know. Yeah. But even though, I mean, they make it look like it's. Uh, in and out that way, but there could be a little secret squirrel thing that goes off into the local housing estate or somewhere nearby. Manhole cover. Mm. Right. Can I have a look at the uh, yes. obviously shifty at the generator building? I haven't spotted any uh, secret 
exit from it. But, uh, they might be coming up into the new building here actually, the secret exits from the main World War II bunker. But this one is apparently a generator building. This is a like a blast wall into the main building. Yeah, double double uh, double shielded. So yeah, you can see it's they say a blast wall goes around the outside. Some cameras up there and. Uh, Diesel fuel. Diesel fuel on the top. And more modern generators over there. You can see an exhaust for the generator up there, look. Yep. It's an exhaust pipe going above the level of the building. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, all the way down there. Ground things to stop, you know, stop the ground subsiding or something. Yeah, some sort of pilings or something to yeah. kind of keep yeah. this keep this floated because it's a porter cabin. Yeah. They probably don't want that making contact with the ground so they don't get damp. It's, a, it's just a false floor around the edge, you know, that's probably you can clamber underneath. But yeah, any time anything like that makes contact with the ground, you get terrible damp, so it's probably just to lift it for that reason, I would have thought. Don't quote me on this, I'm not an expert. Oh yeah, there's manhole covers. Yeah, could be some secret ways in and out. There's, um, oh, it's okay. It's just like a little, uh, a little doorway in the, uh, the wall over there. So I don't know. If anything, I would imagine they probably got a, a little entrance way into the building, but there's, there's manhole covers down there. So that could be something. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of archways that go underneath the uh, the level of this wall here, so it implies there might have been some sort of something that went underneath over there. Let's have a quick look. There's tables up there, so it's uh, obviously somewhere we can go. Let's go and have a quick look, see what we can see. So you can see some uh, evidence of archways, which may have put the put this as being much lower in its time. And archways there. So this must have been built up. Don't know where those tunnels would have gone. But on the back of the, uh, the generator building you can see there's a, uh, a ladder to the top to get in. But, uh, hmm. I'll go over to the corners. So when we went in, we went down to the right, then we went left. So when we came in through this entranceway, we went into the right, down, yep. then we went down again in that direction, and I think we came out over this direction. I've got a funny feeling we actually came out over here. So I think the bunker is actually underneath us in this direction. I could be wrong, what do you reckon? Well, yeah, you're probably right. The stairs must go down that way. The big yeah, it goes in like that, then it takes a right angle smoke, down. And it goes down that direction, so the bunker is actually underneath us over here. And there's a, there's a grill or something. 
That could be water. They did mention something about there being a river. Yeah, a river that goes through. It's a black cat, so uh, I'll say six Hail Marys and uh, do my rosaries. Hello, cat. So, this looks like um, blocking off. There's like uh, blocking for the bunker here or something. There's a concrete, concrete thing here and this is obviously built up so I wonder whether this was uh, an emergency escape shaft. That's just a tree is it or? Yeah it's a tree. <laughs> So, let's have a little look around the other side, see if we can get any uh, perspective on if this is a, an emergency escape shaft. Look, there's a bit more concrete there. So this is obviously a bit more important in the past. It may have been blocked off, but look, the, oh, that, that, there's a, oh, look at this. There's a little, this is interesting, look. There's a little gap through there, and all of this is brick, and that's obviously built up. This must have been a, an escape shaft or something, and I, I, they've dropped a load of concrete yeah. on the top here. So this emergency escape uh, part is probably not used now, but that's going to all the way up there back to the main road, so interesting. I'll have to have a look on a map to see whether we've got any of this right. Oh, here we go. Toby and his manhole, manhole obsession, look. Yep. Looks like uh, could be something. What about that? So, no, that's the way in, isn't yeah, it? When we go in, in. That's, a, that's a slope down the stairs, isn't it? Actually, no. When you when you go in initially, that that bit there is the the bit that faces us. When we come across, I'm not sure what that bit is. There's a there's a secondary bit. Ah, air breathers. Yeah. Oh yeah, air breathers. So that's also your pot. That's the plant room that you show the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. So give a bit of perspective here. So we've got possible entry exit way there. That's the entrance we went in, the main entrance. And not sure what this bit is, but that's been covered up by a few concrete slabs. So that's possibly a way in. And let's have a little look. Oh, you can hear the air, the air filtration equipment going over here, so that was probably the plant room that we were in. Actually here are the, uh, the motors that we just saw underground. These have got gauze filters on them. So what do you reckon then? That's that's probably intake, which is taking the dirty, the dirty crap, and those are outblowers. Because this is this is catching and filtering flies, dirt, debris. Doesn't look like it's been cleaned for a while either. Have a look at this. But that's that's obviously sucking, sucking the air in, and if I'm not mistaken, that that's blowing it out. Yeah. You reckon? Let's have a little see. See if we can put my hand near it. See if we can feel, feel. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. I can't feel air coming out of there so much. Kind of hard to tell, actually. Oh right, Toby's found a uh, 
an idea for being able to tell. Oh, it did it, it worked around this side. Right, so yeah, throw something at it. If it sticks, it's in. Oh, there we go, look, sticks. There's something it's stuck up there, isn't there? So. Okay, give it a go. Oh, yeah, it's in, it's the intake. Which makes sense, because they'd rather keep the dirt on the gauze there. And it shouldn't be so dirty coming out, really. But yeah, levitation leaves. So if the leaves levitate, it's an intake. <laughs> so I, I guess then, I know it's been silly, but I wonder if these will get blown out. Hang on, I can't do it there because you can't see. Right, ready? Ready, so you see the... Yeah, no, nothing. So that's the out, outgoing. Wow. Dogs are actually facing downwards. That's, that's why it's not blowing it sideways. Yeah. Trying to get a little light. Yeah. Well. So, there endeth the science lesson. A little bit of raised ground by here. Raised ground is usually an indication of something. I wonder if that depression in the middle, if you were to clear all this off, has some sort of cover, escape shaft perhaps. Hmm. The earth stacked here for some reason and it's, it's all around this area. Yeah, that's true. What's that what's that building down there? There's something in the trees here, look. Ooh, fire exit it says, look. So it implies if you've come out if you've come out of the ground, you're gonna see this sign pretty soon after coming out of the ground and you might be walking in that direction. Because you wouldn't stick this down here for no other reason, well, no reason at all, I would imagine. Now, is this a bunker exit? Fire exit? Ah, here we go. Ooh, yeah, look, 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 yes, here we go. You see, if you come out of the ground here, you're going to walk up this way. And there's lots of things telling you which way to go. So we've got a pillbox, I think, first, and then we've got the emergency exit down that way. So... Oh yeah, there's another another air breather. Well, that's the air exit, probably, isn't it? Oh, there we are, look, there's two of them. Yeah. You've actually got the exhaler down there, and the intake up here. So this is intake two. Now these are much quieter, so I don't know whether they're just not turned on at the moment, but they they are quieter. Well, I can I can feel warm air. I reckon I can feel warm air coming out of this one. It may be just because the the plant equipment is not turned on, but it it feels warmer, and it smells it smells like the bunker. If you come near here, see if you can sort of. Yeah. It's got that musty yeah. sort of. Old corridor smell. Unless they're using one one in that end and pumping it out this end rather than using the. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, away taking in. Then. Yeah, taking in from one side and going out the other. Yeah. But the, so. Yeah, there's, there's nothing coming out of there. That's not been used for a while. Yeah, could be they alternate. You know, the one end or another end, and maybe because. The bunker hasn't been really used for a lot of people. They don't need to turn both sides on, possibly. One side's enough at the moment. This is the uh, the cheap tour, this is, out here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this has been uh, bricked up, this pillbox. It's all been bricked up. So, yeah, all bricked up. 
Now I don't know whether there's anything down there, but I get the feeling that this is the main bit. So let's go up down and have a little look. Oops, a daisy. Take your time, Matthew. You don't want to fall over. It wouldn't be good in an attempt to make it faster for the viewers. So we don't have a three and a half hour long video. I don't want to break my legs. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. That, that looks like one of these things that comes off the, off the back of there. <laughs> it's kind of funny because it's like got a, a push thing. Not seeing. So you can't put your hand around there, do it? Well, I was going to say, you know, like, I reckon you could get your hand around there. <laughs> Security conscious. I don't think you're going to get in this bunker, but at least you might be able to walk around for a look. And we've got a manhole cover. We have an alarm bell or a. Nope. Doorbell. <laughs> Doorbell. So we're not getting in there, and a little bit of play there, so... It's in use, nice and freed, freed up. We've got a pipe coming down yeah, here. These are all through security measures as well, aren't they? Yeah. So, RSJ type things, or metal posts. And a light, maybe for the night, in case... Oh, we've got a camera up there, look. Oh, yes. You didn't miss that, then. Camera, watching our every move. Well... Value for money. Seven pounds. Yeah, definitely worth seven pounds, I reckon. All you've got to do is time it right, so if nuclear war is about to start, just take your seven pounds and come for a tour of the bunker. <laughs> just stay in there, hide, hide in the toilets, like Ali Law would do. They'll lock you in at night then. Job done. So, you got any thoughts on interesting day? I think it's been a very good day. Yeah. Interesting visit. Good call coming up, actually. It's another Toby top tip. He's, mm -hmm. he's beating me for top tips at the moment, so, yeah. Ah. Just, just tell him Secret Vault sent you. <laughs> Get in for free, then. Try it. Merchant code secret vault 01. Give it a go. And if, if you're nice to the staff, Toby says, you get to see other bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, well, I'm going to do a rude, rude boy flyby of my dr drone over the site, and then that'll probably be it. And just as we're about to leave, I just noticed this possible little substation next to the generator building, possibly something up there. Could be an escape shaft, don't know.